The Western is a staple of American cinema, to the point that it has become ingrained in our very culture to this day. For years, it dominated the box office with easy story archetypes and a visual simplicity that lends itself well to the earliest of silent movies. The first Western is often thought to be Edwin S. Porter's The Great Train Robbery, and although I would agree that it was one of the most influential and narratively complex movies of its time that helped further the film language and popularize the genre, it wasn't really the first. Now that honor would have to go to the mostly forgotten, oh, I always want to say 19, 18, it's a long time ago, the mostly forgotten 1899 film, Kidnapped by Indians, which played with the very classic, well, of course, classic for the time, story of the Cowboys vs. Indians. This predated The Great Train Robbery by about four years. But today, I want to look back at what may be considered the first true masterpiece of the genre in 1916 with Hell's Hinges, starring silent film legend William S. Hart and directed by Charles Swickward. But why am I going back to target this film specifically? This was a movie that was selected for preservation by the National Film Archives, and this was for a good reason. Prior to more well-known films outside the silent era, this one may be the best example of why the popularity of the genre boomed and why it was so prolific through the first four decades of the medium. If The Great Train Robbery was the spark that lit the genre, this would be the satisfying bonfire, or should we say hellfire, that followed. This is also a good chance to take a look back at legendary early actor William S. Hart, by this point, Hart had already been established as a Western icon. Though he would go on to star in talkies, he would have his heyday in the age of the intertitle, helping to establish the Western archetype of a hardened man, burdened by a questionable past and newfound honor and integrity. This is a pretty cut-and-paste character that is still around to this day, and there are few examples of Hart's typecasting as good as in Hell's Hinges. Hart would begin his career in traditional stage production in 1888, starring in such classics as Ben-Hur, before making the move to the silver screen in 1914, where he played two minor supporting roles. His big break would come that same year when he played the outlaw heartthrob Jim Stokes in The Bargain. This first film brought his self-serious Shakespearean style of acting to the movies, but this movie would make him a big star and bring him to the attention of popular movie pioneer Thomas Ince, who would produce more shorts and long features with him, including our movie of today. But let's get into the meat of Hell's Hinges. The movie opens with Reverend Bob Henley, played by Jack Standing, a preacher of questionable moral character and prone to act on base temptations. Now, Reverend Henley is something of an embarrassment to his church and ultimately told to pack up and sent to become a new preacher in a godless western town nicknamed Hell's Hinges. Now, here is a town not lacking in sinners who, frankly, don't take kindly to the arrival of the preacher and plot to run him and his congregation out of town. And in the beginning of this movie, I'm not going to lie, it kind of reminded me of the opening to, say, Hot Fuzz, with the police actively trying to get rid of someone in their department by sending them off to a remote and undesirable location. <laughs> Except in Hot Fuzz, they're mostly doing that for laughs, and here they're playing it dead serious, all in line with Hart's personal desire to keep a sense of authentic realism to his westerns. When the Reverend and his sister Faith arrive into town, they are treated with hostility by a mob of ruffians, However, among them is the baddest of the bunch, Hart's character, Blaze Tracy. I know, kind of a, it almost sounds like a name from Fast and Furious, Blaze Tracy. Tracy is so feared that none of the other hooligans are even willing to look at him wrong. Classic. And Hart does a good job. He has stony glares and disgruntled frowns, and they're all paired with his natural athletics. He has his horse riding and standard issue Hollywood good looks. Luckily for the Reverend, Blaze catches that old love-at-first-sight bug when he first sets eyes on Henley's sister, Faith. And although this is sort of this about-face from his life of depravity, and it can be a bit abrupt, it still kind of works as he tries to become a better man as a protector of the religious community from hostile parties in town. Unfortunately, the old powers that be in Hell's Hinges don't really take a liking to these new developments and plot to bring the church down, quite literally. But with Blaze Tracy protecting them, they need to go for kind of this new approach by corrupting the Reverend himself. For a Western, this film doesn't actually have that much gunslinging action until you hit the third act. For the first two acts, it is a through and through character drama, mostly centered around Hart as the primary POV character, witnessing the tragic fall of the Reverend. Yet when the action gets going, it becomes some of the most visceral scenes of angry violence that I have seen up to this point in the silent era. 
mostly thanks to all that emotional groundwork done by the screenplay in those first two acts. If I was to point out a weak point, it would unfortunately be the romance. The love at first sight trope is one that, personally, I have never been fond of, and it often comes off as this hokey plot device, at least to me, rather than a developed out and natural romance. Yet, the leads do have good chemistry, so they make it work despite the limitations. The other sticking point is the preacher's dark turn can come off a little rushed by modern standards with the short 60-minute runtime. But I'm not going to harp on that too much. It was successful in laying the groundwork for a big payoff, so it does make the best of that time that it can. It is mostly just something that we're so used to modern pacing that it can come off as kind of off-putting. The film succeeds when it's playing with these intriguing themes, such as the idea of sinners not trying to destroy the church from without, but instead from within. Reverend Hindley is this spineless leader at the start of the film, being easily tempted towards lustful encounters with women in his congregation, uh, being bad at sermons, and being prone to questionable alcoholism. So it's not really surprising that the sinners of the town managed to turn him towards his worst impulses. And even though the reverend already was kind of a bad egg to begin with, it is still kind of tragic to watch his downfall, especially as his sister is always trying to help him do better. And it is here that we see that this rage that has just up until this point been simmering under Hart's character's, you know, surface, it comes out in this explosive way. But before we get to that, we are getting into our spoiler talk again. So please be warned if you want to see this for yourself. From here on out, I will be spoiling characters' fates and the ending. The Reverend, in the end, is led by the sinners into a drunken stupor and tries to burn down his own newly built church, leading to a firefight between the enraged congregation and the outlaws of town. It is in this battle that the Reverend loses his life, trying to destroy the very thing he built. With the preacher dead and his sister crying over his body, it is not enough that the Reverend had to fall to his worst impulses. So too does now the character of Blaze Tracy. In a powerful moment of rage, Hart shows why everyone in town was so afraid of him. They should be. He comes into the town and alone engages in a gunfight with the men responsible for the scheme, intentionally lighting the outlaw's place of gathering and congregation on fire, just as they had done to the church. Then, invoking the vengeful wrath of God, allows the entire town of Hell's Hinges to burn to the ground, as the religious community flees into the desert, like the stories of Moses of old. Now you can tell that the imagery here has a lot of those religious connotations, but it is in this strong symbolism of the Old Testament that the film finds itself in good company. It is a community of sinners being rewarded by unleashing the worst impulses of a man who is just trying to be better. And it leaves you wondering if Hart's character had been a hero at all, or just this some sort of mad bull who had just been waiting for the wrong person to poke at it. Without a word, Hart conveys all of this and really makes you believe in the good-natured sinner, a man of hidden rage, and a person who is just trying to do better and arguably failing, all without a single spoken word. That is his classic stage background really starting to show itself on screen. The movie overall is great and a standout of the Western genre, and one I kind of, in retrospect, wish that I had included in my top picks of 1916. It is heart at its height, the unforgivable West at its best, and a classic themes of retribution and redemption fully realized. This, to me, is what makes Hell's Hinges the first true masterpiece of the Western genre. And those are my thoughts on Hell's Hinges. If you have seen it, what do you think of it? Let me know in the comments down below, and as always, be sure to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. As always, keep those reels turning. Thank you.